What would you do if your government completely failed and could no longer provide basic security or essential services? Yeah, let's talk about that. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, hey there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thank you for joining us on, of course, another fun-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, joining you from our lovely Cardio Miracle Studios here in Eastern Indiana. The Brian Nichols Show is powered by our friends over at Amp America. If you want the news without the corporate media fluff or bias, head to ampamerica.com. Get the news you need to know, plus with some pretty darn good opinion pieces, podcasts, and more. I do say so myself because, well, I'm writing a few of them. So one more time, ampamerica.com. Also, The Brian Nichols Show and yours truly is powered by our studio sponsor, Cardio Miracle. Now, Cardio Miracle, I've been asked time and again, Brian, you've been promoting this this uh, this awesome new supplement, you say, on your show every single episode. Why? Why are you so adamant about Cardio Miracle? Well, the, the answer is very simple, because it works. I've been using Cardio Miracle for just over a year, and with a family history of high blood pressure, I was literally looking for anything to help deal with my high blood pressure. Now, mind you, I work out six days a week. I originally used to weigh 380 pounds. I had lost 180 pounds doing intensive diet and exercise. I had changed my diet. I was eating all the right things. And yet, 10 years of going through all these life-altering changes and my blood pressure remained consistently high. And I was like, well, what's going on here? Oh, Thanks, genetic history of high blood pressure. Thanks, mom and dad. Gotta love that. So um, then I found Cardio Miracle. John Hewlett, the CEO, was here in the show, and he started talking about nitric oxide as one of the, the secret ingredients for Cardio Miracle, helping improve blood flow to the heart, helping lower blood pressure, helping improve your sleep at night, plus uh, helping you get a better pump at the gym, and a lot of other awesome benefits. But, you know, I was instantly intrigued. I jumped on board. I said, let's give this a shot. Heck, there's a money back guarantee. I got nothing to lose. I was floored. Two months of using Cardio Miracle, my blood pressure went from being consistently high, 140 over 90 in that kind of range, to now here I sit 120 over 80, very, very much, you know, at a normal blood pressure for the past, you know, 10, 15, or 10 to 12 months now. And I got to tell you, my doctor, they were blown away. I've been blown away. I've, I've, seen the difference. I felt the difference. So folks, I, I will say this again. The reason I promote Cardio Miracle every single episode is because it works. And we talk about, you know, here at the show, we want to bring solutions to the table. I don't want some government bureaucrat sitting in DC saying, you know, there's a lot of people with high blood pressure. Let's mandate this pill from Pfizer to go ahead and get people, you know, their blood pressure regulated forever. And then they're going to have it forever. No, that's not what the whole point of a cardio miracle is. Cardio miracle is to help solve our problems, right? We want to solve our problems here at the Brian Nichols show without big, uh, big, you know, mommy, daddy government coming in to save the day, or are they saving the day? I, I dare say uh, most of you in the audience know the truth. And that is they're not here to save the day. Don't know why I channeled my inner Joe Biden, but I did. Um, so you know, anyways, with that being said, folks, one more time, cardio miracle. I cannot promote it enough. So head down to the show notes, head to the link. If you're watching us on the video version of the show, it's in the video description, head over to cardio miracle. You should have a, an instant 15% uh, discount applied to your order. If you follow those links, if for whatever reason, discount is not applied, use code T B N S that'll give you the 15% discount guaranteed. And I teased it earlier. You have nothing to lose folks besides that high blood pressure, because there is a 100% money back guarantee. So don't just take my word for it. Heck, don't just take the hundreds of other members of the Brian Nichols Show audience's word for it. Take the word of the tens of thousands of other folks out there who have started experiencing the cardio miracle difference for themselves. They're on board. I'm on board. Members of the audience are on board. So it's your turn. Time to hop on board. One more time, cardiomiracle.com, the best heart health supplement in the world. Your heart will thank you. All right, folks. So uh, for today's episode, yeah, we're, we're kicking things off with a little bit different of an episode. And let's just start out. This is a very important and eye-opening conversation. And what we're doing is we're digging into the current happenings 
in South Africa. So my guest today is someone who's on the ground there. He's been actively involved in trying to maintain peace and security amidst this rising chaos, the rising violence, and frankly, it's a breakdown of traditional civil society. So for safety reasons, we are keeping his identity anonymous today, um, but he's going to be giving us his brutally honest firsthand account of what's actually happening down there in South Africa. So joining us today is our good friend K9 Reaper. That's the pseudonym we're going to be using. And for this heavy topic, yes, it is one that we desperately need more awareness and attention from the global community. But hey, while this situation might seem dire, K9 will also shed some light on the heroic efforts of citizens, just normal, average, everyday moms, dads, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts out there who are fighting, banding together to help protect their communities when the government has absolutely 100% failed them. So you're going to hear some very hard truths. You're also going to hear about resilience of that, yes, that human spirit in the face of adversity. So uh, I do apologize for the lack of video for today's episode. Stick around at the end. I'll do my traditional outro so you'll see my smiling face once again. God bless you. But with that being said, folks, I hope you get some value from today's episode. And heck, if you're a podcast listener, you're not missing anything. You're used to no video, so no stress is there. But with that being said, thank you for joining us now on to the show, Canine Reaper, here on The Brian Nichols Show. All right, folks. So like I said in the intro, a little bit different of an episode today. Today, we're going to be doing a, uh, a sit down with uh, his name is Canine Reaper, which obviously is not his real name, uh, but he's hailing down from South Africa. And a lot of stuff's been going down uh, in South Africa and not good stuffs. Uh, so we need to really uh, pay attention, even though it is halfway around the world of what's happening, uh, especially when we, we see that what's happening halfway around the world does impact us here at home. So to discuss all that's been happening down in South Africa, joining me here in the show. Yes, K9 Reaper, if that is your real name. K9, welcome to the Brian Nichols Show. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And I'm glad we were able to get this conversation set up. I know you've been just absolutely swamped down in South Africa doing a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today, and that is trying to keep the peace, um, trying to avoid the the escalation of, of intense um, you know, conflict of intense uh, negative sentiments between races and, and socioeconomic statuses. There's a lot going on here behind the scenes in South Africa. And frankly, man, I think a lot of folks in America just aren't aware of what's happening in South Africa, how the heck we got to where we are today. So just to kind of give us the groundwork, if you could, Gaynon, give us a little bit of a background. Where are we right now in South Africa? How did we get here and where are we headed? Well, essentially, to cut a oh, man, that's a long story, but to cut a really long story short, uh, and hopefully to not bore you too much, essentially, we've gone from obviously having really bad crime and, and things like that to what is now essentially targeted crime uh, that's, that's really getting out of control. So we have everything, you can name it, from copper cable theft, cash and transit heists, violent home invasions, um, targeting of essential infrastructure such as cell phone towers, uh, water-based infrastructure, electrical-based infrastructure, uh, violent hijackings, courier vans getting hit. I mean, you, you can really take your pick. And obviously, each of those little sections has its own little ecosystem that falls under it. Uh, We've got Zama Zamas too, uh, which is your illegal gold miners. That's something that you don't essentially find anywhere else in the world. It's it's almost a exclusive South African term. I'm not saying that no one else has illegal gold miners, but ours are sort of different, uh, a little <laughs> bit spicier than your, your average guy panning for gold in a river. Um, so yeah, we've got all of that. Uh, but as we'll cover when we go along, we also have communities who are pushing through all of this to try and make things better. So that would be a great takeaway at the end of the show if people could understand that, yeah, things are bad, but we're damn hell doing our best to make it better. Let's put it that way. Well, and that right there, K9, is the exact focus of the show, right? Like the show is not just to focus on the problems we see in the world, because if we were just to do a show on that, we'd be having uh, a lot of problems we'd be discussing. But namely, we want to focus not just on those problems, but also the solutions that we can bring to the table here, right? Perfect. And yeah. that is exactly why I wanted to have you in the show, because when we're talking about these, these very real issues, 
I think a lot of folks, they just kind of grow numb to the, the growing mountain of problems because they have their own problems in their lives and they're looking for, you know, some, some type of magic pill to make things better. And the reality is there is no magic pill. It is people like you who are going out and actually putting in the blood, sweat, and tears. And I'm going to emphasize the blood part here in this conversation for what you actually are doing in, in terms of helping make South Africa more of a secure place. But let's kind of talk about the solutions, right? That is where we want to have some, some you know, maybe a glimmer of hope <laughs> we can bring to people, not just yeah, in South Africa, yeah. but across the world, because they're hearing the story and it definitely raises some red flags. So let's maybe go back to what you guys are seeing. I know you, you mentioned a lot of the, the different areas where we're seeing some social breakdown. You're seeing, you know, obviously more uh, nonviolent crimes turning into violent crimes. So yep. what are you finding your role there as canine? You know, you, you're, you're down in South Africa. You, you're talking beforehand. This is a beautiful area you find yourself living in. It's home sweet home to you, but you, do, do you see it being home sweet home for the foreseeable future? And what is your role in trying to help maintain that? So I, I'm not going anywhere. Let's put it that way. Um, I love my country. A I absolutely love this country. It is, I know a lot of people say, yeah, there's lots of beautiful places all over the world, but, but South Africa is just, it's gorgeous. Uh, you can go into the right places, meet the right people, do the right things. You know, you can live your life, raise a family, do whatever you want to do to succeed, prosper, etc. So with that being said, that is what our role essentially is here. So I, firstly, I'm not alone in this. Canine's not a hero. I'm not um, Iron Man running around doing his thing, essentially. Uh, I, I'm one of countless other individuals. I'm just lucky enough to have the platform uh, to showcase it. So I just want to cover that if that's fine. Um, so with that being said, Essentially, you've got all your little community clusters and people uh, that are trying to improve things through community self-sustainment, management, improvement, uh, role-playing, all these different things. So role-playing on my side of the world essentially means community policing, uh, where you as a community member actively go out on patrols. Um, it's, it's a concept I've been trying to explain to a lot of my American friends because the moment they hear the word patrol, the first thing they think of is militia. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we're, we're not that. We are community-based. We still follow the rule of law, so it's important that we add the T's and C's. We still follow the rule of law, and we still answer to uh, South African uh, government or policing structures, whatever is in place, When if, if there's still anything in place, with all honesty. And... Uh, we try and fix things. Um, we support the police where we can. We support search and rescue teams. We support even the bloody military. If they go on operations and they need help, we support them. Um, not just with manpower, but with equipment, supplies, intelligence, uh, training, tactics. You know, there's a whole lot of things that sort of uh, go into to what we do. But really what it comes down to is community-based infrastructures that are doing their best to work hand in hand and assist the official structures that are in place with regards to law enforcement, government, uh, and that sort of thing. So that is what we are trying to do. We're not out to replace the police. We're not out to um, be gung-ho and run around like cowboys. I know we're living in the Wild West, but we're, we're not running around and doing any of that just yet. We are just essentially and people hate it when I say this part of it, but it's it's the truth at the end of the day. We're essentially putting our lives on the line to try and make a better country for the long term. That's really all we want. So that's us. And um, we're just going to keep going, honestly. People, unfortunately, do uh, get injured or they actually, unfortunately, pass away due to whatever's occurred on the patrol and things like that. But we partake in the relevant training and things like that. And we stay alert and yeah, we're just going to keep going. It's really all we can do. Well, so K9, I think a lot of folks are hearing this and they just say, well, why, why did South Africa get to the point where they need folks like you, right? To go out and, and try to help bring back some semblance of civility and norm normalcy, right? So right. based on where, where you guys have gotten to and where you are today, I mean, what are the, what are the prospects for South Africa actually look like? Well, look, essentially, firstly, we got here because of a, a lack of proper, proper uh, government oversight, uh, government management, government control, whatever people want to call it. Governance, I suppose, is actually the word here. Yeah? And uh, yeah, just a complete lack of 
anything from the official powers that be uh, has led us to this point where civilians such as myself are getting in our cars, driving around from eight o'clock at night or six o'clock at night until four, five, six a.m. in the morning, um, losing friends along the way if things like that happen, and going back home to our family and loved ones, knowing that we did our little bit just to make our neighborhood at least a little bit better for the future. Uh, what the future actually looks like right now, and that's another like huge long story we can go into one day, but essentially where we are right now is, uh, can I swear on your show? <laughs> just dumb yeah, question. Yeah. Okay, okay. This is just out of respect there. So, okay, so basically someone coined the term and I could never find, I need to find this person, but essentially we're fucked, but free. That, that's really what it comes down to. So in the US, you guys have got way too much oversight. Uh, the government's digging in and, and, you know, they're really grabbing you guys from every angle. For us, we have nothing. <laughs> there mm. is zip zilch. There is, yes, there are hundreds of um, laws and stuff in place that target certain individuals and cultures and whatever. Um, but even those really sort of only help a certain few. For the rest of us, it's now at a stage where they're not even fixing the roads and stuff really. So we just do it ourselves. You know, for example, um, they aren't catching the, the guys on the street that are grabbing copper cable and they say it's impossible, yet I can go out at any time of the night and almost be guaranteed a success because I know where to go and what to look for and things like that. And that's as a civilian. So what the future is looking like is we need more communities to come together and accept that you're paying your taxes really for absolutely nothing, uh, for literally nothing. And people can have to start just getting involved. That's, that's really where we're going. Um, and if they don't do that, I can tell you now, if we have this conversation in 10 years time, at the rate things are going right now, there will be absolutely nothing left. Uh, and, and I really, really mean that. I know a lot of people like to type that up on, on Twitter and they're like, yeah, okay, South Africa screwed in five years, blah, blah, blah. But the rate things are going now, like for example, all the little towns that surround the bigger towns, they've all but collapsed. There's no water, the sewage running through the streets. They don't have electricity half the time. Now you're finding that the, the average town, like for example, let's take a big city like Johannesburg, um, they're getting overrun by vagrants, squatters, land grabs. Uh, they, they, there's a new increase as well uh, with violent home invasions, but they hit your property and they literally steal the copper cable on the way out of a violent home invasion. I mean, even for someone like myself, reading reports like that, I'm like, okay, <laughs> that, that is for me something different. Uh, cases of you go on holiday, you come back home and your whole property stripped. They've taken the geezer out the roof. They have removed the copper piping. They've ripped the DB board out and taken all the electrical wiring from inside the house. They remove the taps, anything that can be scrapped, essentially. You come back after three days, four or five days on holiday uh, and your house is completely cleaned out. So the future is essentially basically what my Twitter account is trying to show people without being too negative and saying we're all going to die and blah, 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 because we're not, uh, but it's going to be a hell of a rough ride. Um, so people, canine, really yeah. quick to that, right? Like what does the role of race relations play here in South Africa with the, the chaos that we've been seeing? Because, and I've been, you know, obviously watching this third party, hundreds thousands of miles away so everything that yeah. i'm getting from information and frankly what everybody else who's listening today is getting for information is all coming through third hand parties right um so so with that being said what does it look like when you're talking about these racial relations and and maybe even take it a step further also you know talking about socioeconomic uh, factors how does that contribute to the the i guess really destruction of the South African uh, society, and to your point earlier, the the kind of question marks for uh, South African um, relevancy really going forward into the future. So with regards to race relations, uh, it's a very spicy topic, uh, the side of the ocean. Um, you'll get your individuals or your parties that will say, uh, if I may be so forward and honest, uh, that all blacks are out to kill white people. And there's a whole lot of really weird shit that's going down with regards to race relations and what you're seeing people physically type up and pop up on their screens and things like that. But with, with all honesty, um, again, if I may be so forward, 
Firstly, yes, there are certain political parties, such as the EFF, who openly sing songs such as Kill the Boer, um, Shoot to Kill, and, and all these sort of things, uh, which is obviously aimed at a single demographic, white South African farmers, Boers. Um, and you'll see that a lot of that extends to just white people in general, unfortunately, with regards to, to that song and, and what they're trying to do there. But with that being said, uh, for me personally, this is only obviously my opinion, that comes down to them and their political party and what they're trying to do there. They are singing about genociding uh, a population and it's accepted, unfortunately. So we must keep that in mind. But with that being said, I often go into the worst townships in this country, exclusively black townships. And from my point of view, I've never once felt afraid. Um, Yes, I've gone in in full body armor and we've gone in to assist the population within those townships. We've physically gone in to assist them, whether it's children that have been murdered or, or mothers giving birth because the ambulance is too scared to go in because they get shot and robbed, just so by the way. Uh, all these little things like that. So, trying to multitask there, apologies. So, with all of that being said, you will always have, unfortunately, individuals pushing for. Uh, call it violence in, in terms of color spectrum. But then you've got other individuals who look at it and realize that with all honesty, it's sort of just fringe-ish groups on, on the edges and stuff that are doing it. Yes, they've got a lot of grab and a lot of control. Let's, let's not beat around the bush there. But um, I haven't yet gone into a township, exclusively black township, and thought to myself, I'm going to get skinned alive here any second. So. That's just my little bit. I know that's going to irritate a lot of people because a lot of people want nothing more than for me to turn around and say, but there's a white genocide and things like that. But yeah. Well, and that's what we hear, right? That And that's why I wanted you to kind of articulate what you're actually seeing. Is it what we hear on, on the social media and stuff? Or is it what you're actually saying today in the show, right? And it seems like it's just more of just indiscriminate chaos, right? Indiscriminate bloodshed. Mm -hmm. Now, have there been, you know, white farmers, for example, have been targeted? Yes. You know, are there yes. echoes from the past that are carrying forward today? I think obviously yes, but it's not so much that this is a, you know, a, a singular focused white genocide to your right. point, right? This is across the board, just when a society starts to collapse, these are the things that happen. Right. So I'm glad that you sort of covered it in that direction. Um, People, look, honestly, no one's being pulled out of their cars yet in traffic and, and being murdered with pangas because they're white. Uh, we're, we're not looking at Hotel Rwanda on a South African point of view. You know, there's no radio RTLM blaring in the background and uh, et cetera and et cetera. Yes, people are being targeted in, in, in certain uh, aspects because of their white skin. Yeah, I'll have to say it that way. But... In my point of view, there's currently no ongoing genocide right now. Yes, we are seeing the hallmarks for it. We are seeing all those little things add up as we go along that sort of lead to these things. But we're not seeing any, if anything to that level yet, if I may be so forward and, and blunt. I know it's going to irritate and piss off a lot of people, but it's just the truth. And to those individuals, uh, I'll happily take them on a patrol any day. I'll take them into a township and they'll see you're not yeah you might get robbed <laughs> unless you unless you go in with, with uh guys like myself but you're not gonna get murdered because of the color of your skin yet at least why do you think the government is sitting on its hands not really coming in to help at all with this honest question because they can't they do not have the capacity to do so adding to that story to give you an example we have special forces bases, uh, uh, SANDF special forces base that was overrun by squatters who stripped the base of all its copper internals, copper piping, geysers, electrical infrastructure, taps, okay, a special forces base with active duty personnel. Um, the July riots of 2021, where I was a, a huge active role player with regards to that. Man, I wish, I wish you had given me a shot then. I could have live fed everything to you. You would have loved yeah. it. Um, they deployed the SANDF and within a few days, they essentially ran out of food and supplies and had to go back to base in their own country. Uh, so the government physically 
cannot, they cannot assist. Uh, you have instances of a single police van that has to patrol like 500 kilometers worth of road or 800 kilometers worth of road. How is that possible? A police van, a, a, a Hilux Bucky, or you guys will call it a truck or whatever, with two guys in it that they, they go on a single uh, practice shoot maybe once a year and they shoot 10, 15 rounds, if at all. That is, you see, so this is how bad things really are. And that is why we are, we are picking up the slack and doing our absolute damn best uh, to fix things. It's interesting really quick, K9, because you, you talk about how the government really can't do anything. And you guys are the ones who have to pick up the slack. Do you think, and I want to, uh, you know, your, your genuine perspective here, do you think that this is actually a better solution that the government can't do these things and it is kind of pushing folks like you to to fill in the gaps like is this i, I don't want to say a best case scenario but based on kind of I all the you. proverbial crap hitting the wall i mean is this kind of like the best outcome in terms of actually dealing with the nonsense i hear you so again fucked but free so right now with regards to what's happening in south africa and where we're going the less the government gets involved the better um, again, they can't, there's absolutely nothing. They can't even maintain water based infrastructure. They cannot, uh, we are losing, man, I, I wish I had gone and checked up those stats for you, but it's, let's put it just perspective here. Uh, let me try and think of a scenario. Let me, let me scroll through my account. Um, as you talk here, let me just hit my profile quickly because it's yeah. It's no, so you be... here, you scroll, you scroll, because you know I I did some research before we we sat down today. I'm glad you and did. Like, <laughs> I was, I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Well, I was just I was shaken by how this has been more or less the same story in South Africa that's being told just like 30, 40 years continuously, just in different versions, right? It seems like you guys have really been ping ponging back and forth. Who's who's causing the chaos? And right now, it seems like you're right. you're at a, a spot where you, now now you know the, the chaos is really starting to boil up, and it's going more towards not anarchy. Well, yeah, I guess more or less anarchy, right? Government really can't do anything, and it's relying on folks like you to to fill in those Absolutely. those gaps. It's it's civil unrest at the end of the day. It's uh, that's essentially what it boils down to. So a lot of people look at what I post and they say to me, "But that's just a protest." But you've got protesters. We doing air quotes here, or whatever. Um, burning tires in the middle of the road. They've dug a trench in front of those tires. So your vehicle cannot cross that barrier. And then they've piled those stones on the other side of the burning tires. So you don't see them through the smoke and the flames. And then behind that, they've still got rocks placed at random intermittent intervals with any form of debris that they can find. Uh, trees, bigger rocks and boulders, uh, anything they can get, they, they've done that. Now you approach that with your vehicle, they will pull you out of your car and they will murder you straight. So, you know, people look at that and it's like, those are not protesters, guys. That is civil unrest. That is, uh, I don't want to say it's barbarism and things like that, because then people start associating things with color again and things start getting ridiculous. But what it boils down to is it is civil unrest. I mean, you can go through my, my timeline, you just type in civil unrest and there are thousands of videos, literally. Just where the South African favorite, we can find a tire petrol and matches anywhere in this bloody country no matter where you are and we will set it on fire in the middle of the road and we will just cause chaos and destruction but we won't do it on weekends because weekends are not working <laughs> so we'll do it monday to friday because we need a day off but we're not going to do it on the on a saturday sunday so yeah fun do you do you ever get k9 do you ever get any um any pushback from government in in south africa like hey you know you and your guys you're going to go and you know help you know, go into a community, like you said, you're in body, body armor, you know, ladies need help delivering babies, whatever it may be. Right. Do you ever get any pushback from government saying, Hey, no, go away. We got this. Or, Hey, you're, you're starting to overstep you, yeah. a little bit, stuff like that. They, they have recently tried a, a project which kicked off in the last five ish or so years called the community in blue. So we've got structures, here, commu community based structures here uh, called uh, community policing forums, CPF for short. And the government essentially wanted all external first responders, such as myself, to fall under the community in blue programs. 
as a means and a way of controlling the whole system. The kickback was massive, it failed immediately, and that was that. Um, in 99.9% .9 of cases, you can arrive on scene, you're talking about government kickback now, you can arrive on scene, you can assist a police officer. As long as you look the part and you approach them professionally and with respect, you can assist them. They will, nine times out of 10, they will not say no. Obviously, all things dependent on what the situation is. Hell, we've been on patrols many, many times now, countless times actually, um, where I've been on a patrol and a SAPS van stops the vehicle and says they need help, follow them. Sometimes you're on a foot patrol and they say, please jump in my van, I need you to support me. Um, I'll never forget the one time a JMPD lady, uh, which, which is our traffic police essentially, JMPD, uh, she had knocked off with Judy and she was heading home in her police van, got a call for immediate support and she decided uh, it's her duty, so she's going to go help. It turned out to be a violent home invasion. And she saw us on patrol and, and stopped the van and, and asked us, please, can we hop in the van and support her? So you do the right thing. And the first thing you say is, ma'am, are you giving me an instruction to climb in your vehicle and, and assist you? In South African law, as far as I understand, every male from the age, I think it's 16 or 18, up until the age of like 60 or 65 or something, must assist um, an official within reason when requested, if you are able-bodied. She said, yes. So we hop in the van, we go and help. Um, arrested two dudes and, and that was that and she had actually knocked off so yeah the, in, with regards to kickback uh, there's almost none honestly there might be a little bit for the guys who go very like gung-ho um, but again we're, we're actually following the law whilst mm -hmm. assisting the law that's really what it is we don't want to be seen as cowboys and things like that that's not how it looks um, yes there are shootouts and people do die and it is violent and things like that but yeah we, we carry on. So as we're getting towards the tail end here, K9, one of the things that we've been talking about today, just it really it rhymes with a past episode we've had here, actually past guest, and we've had him on a few times, um, Brian Stern from Project Dynamo. And what they do over at Project Dynamo is they'll take areas where there's civil unrest, uh, natural disasters. So the examples we've talked about most, recent, uh, most recently in the show, uh, Ukraine, Afghanistan, Maui, when we had the Maui fires in, in, over in Hawaii. Uh, right, yeah. right now we're talking about uh, Haiti right here on the south of our border. Mm -hmm. And uh, what Br uh, Brian and his team over at Project Dynamo do is they will fly out to these respective areas when the U.S. government pretty much just drops the ball. And they, you know, we, we have American citizens or what have you that are stuck or in need of help. And they're the ones who go in. They're the ones who either, you know, are the, the folks getting people out or helping oh, trying cool. to calm things down. Yeah, that's and cool. Yeah, it's so cool. And to hear, you know, what they do and what you guys are doing, it's like same church, different pew, because right now I think we're very much at a spot and, and this isn't, you know, respective to South Africa or, you know, America. This, I think, is a global issue where mm -hmm. we're, we as people are realizing that no one's coming to save you. You need Absolutely. to be the person. You need to be the the community, the the resource to help actually create the change you want to see and what you're doing 100%. in South Africa. Yeah. What Brian's doing for project dynamo, like you're seeing where government is dropping the ball or in your case where government literally doesn't have a ball to drop and you're now <laughs> entering in offering some solutions. Right. And that one, right there, 100%. I think, yeah. And that, that is exactly what we talked about when we started is that we, if we're going to have any, you know, ray of, of sunshine at the end of this episode, it is that folks like you are creating solutions. You're creating opportunities where anybody who would normally look at this and just throw their hands up and say, eh, we're aft. It's a failed state. Like, what are we going to do? You're saying, no, no, this is home. I'm going to, I'm going to treat this like it's home because it is home. I'm going to, I'm going to, to go out of my way and do what I need to do to protect my home. I think that is a Absolutely. different conversation versus what so many folks have been really conditioned to be the normal response, and that is wait for someone in government to come down on a you know white shining horse to save the day. That's not reality. You're showing okay. that, and you're actually helping create some solutions to that. So that's my final thoughts for today. K9, what do you have first on your end? Look, thank you so much for, for having me on. Uh, I must apologize. I, I sound half asleep because I am. It's been a long, long couple nights. Um, Look, I'll finish it off. Usually, and with... my guests are half asleep because it's me. So at least it's it's not me this time. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so just to finish it off on my end, um, the, the Afrikaner in South Africa, the Boer especially, have a saying, um, and they they like to say, "Once is here on to bow," which is means we are to build. 
and that is what we are for. So we will, as civilians in, and citizens of South Africa, we will continue to do what we have to within the rule of law uh, until there's no rule of law left, and then we will continue to do what we have to and adjust the circumstances. So that's All right. K9, I, I really appreciate you um, joining us today. And to your point, I know you got to get some Z's because you are running on fumes there and you're doing you're doing the, the the Lord's work, man. You're out there. You're fighting the good fight. You're you're showing folks how to lead by example and you're actually making things better for your community. And that is exactly what we need to see more folks uh, actually do. And that is, you know, be the change you want to see. Don't wait again for that proverbial, uh, you know, white knight on the, the shining horse to come down and save the day. Like you, you can be the hero in your own story. And frankly, you're going to be the hero in somebody else's story too. So uh, with that being said, really been a great conversation, K9. Thank you for joining us. And folks, if you got some value from today's episode, we're going to include all the links so you can go ahead and follow K9, see all the, the different things he's doing down there in South Africa, what's actually taking place um, from him himself. He, he airs it on his uh, his uh, Twitter page, X page, excuse me. Um, so we'll make sure we include all those links there in the show notes. Uh, any final uh, thoughts or words here, K9, as we wrap things up? Look, anyone else in the world that uh, is sitting back and watching and thinking to themselves that someone's going to come save them, as you said, nobody's coming. Okay, so all they can do is get up off their butt, start training, start looking out for their neighborhoods and their communities, start building a little bit, giving back themselves. Things will come. Things will come right. So yeah. Rock and roll. K9, thanks for joining, folks. Stick around. I'm going to go you. ahead and wrap things up here afterwards. But uh, this is going to wrap up our conversation with K9 out of South Africa there. So please, again, go ahead and support him on Twitter. If you can please go ahead and share today's episode, we'd also love it. With that being said, we'll talk to you next time. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up our conversation with K9. What an absolutely incredibly powerful conversation. Um, you know, we, we dug into what's happening down there in South Africa and how rapidly deteriorating these conditions have gotten. I personally, I have immense respect and admiration for K9. I mean, he's out there risking his own safety day in and day out, trying to hold things together and prevent further suffering. Suffering? And he's out there every day trying to hold things together to prevent further suffering. So while the realities that he described are absolutely grim, it's also in my opinion, a little uplifting to hear about how these communities are coming together. There's this spirit of resilience, of self-reliance, and this is the part I love. There is a refusal to give up their homeland. They they have you know all these human stories that are out there, and for me, they give hope, even amidst this insanity um, and you know dare I say this darkness that's taking place down in South Africa. So I urge all of you, please go share this episode far and wide. The more awareness. We can raise about what's happening in South Africa, the more pressure we can put on governments and organizations to take action before it devolves into even more of a humanitarian crisis. And, and I think it's safe to say we just can't not talk about this, right? We can't just turn a blind, a blind eye to this. So thank you again to uh, my guest, K9, for his bravery and uh, not just what he's doing, but for joining me today, talking about uh, you know what he's seeing firsthand. And also thank you, member of the audience, for listening. Um, don't forget, if you wanted to go ahead and support the show, share the episode when you do tag yours truly at B Nichols Liberty. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. I forgot I'm on the Instagrams. Also, you can go ahead and support us over on your favorite podcast or video um, uh, platform. That's the word, not tool, platform. Uh, so if you go to, let's say, Rumble, YouTube, uh, Ben Swan's Sovereign, or heck, your old classics like Twitter and Facebook, you can find the entire video version of The Brian Nichols Show there in its entirety. So go ahead, give us some love, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell, and of course, hit that like button and head down below into the comments. What are your thoughts on what's happening down in South Africa, were you aware that South Africa was basically turning into a pseudo third world uh, third world country? I, I wasn't aware it had gotten that bad. So if you were kind of shocked and blown away by today's episode, let us know down below in the comments. Continue the conversation. Also, if you're listening to us in the favorite version of the podcast that you like to consume, head over to, uh, yes, your favorite podcast catcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, wherever it is you consume your podcast, hit that download all unplayed episodes after you hit the subscribe button of course and reason being we have over 800 and what 
80? I forget how many episodes. We got tons of shows here on the Brian Nichols Show from uh, yours truly uh, having guests here in the show, yours truly serving as guests on other shows. Um, plus, we've had some solo episodes here with guests as well. So I guarantee as you dig through the archives, you're going to find a few of those episodes leave you educated, enlightened, and informed. And one final plug, and that is to please support the folks who support us, and that is our amazing sponsors. So, like I said in the intro, our good friends over at Cardio Miracle, please go give them some love. Plus, our awesome new sponsors like Indie Emporium and their awesome Michael Scott uh, 2024 shirt, 40-day plan. Go ahead and check that out over at Indie Emporium. We have the Wellness Company. We have Blood of Tyrants Liquid Freedom Energy Tea, which I must say, I am hooked. I am hooked on this drink. It has, what I say last time, seven ingredients for the folks who are playing along in the home game. Filtered water, natural flavors, yerba mate extract, citric acid, fruit and vegetable juice, monk fruit juice concentrate, and stevia leaf extract. That's it. That's all it's in there. Now, I'm going to challenge you. Go look at your Red Bull. Go look at your Monster. You're going to find, like, what, 40 different ingredients, and I'm going to say at least two-thirds of them you can't pronounce the, the names of the ingredients or, heck, even know what they are. I know what fruit juice is. I know what that is. So I'm okay with putting it in my body. Hopefully you are too. Use code TBNS for a discount there uh, when you order your liquid freedom and it'll show up right at your door. You don't even have to go to the gas station. How about that? Just go ahead, place your order and it'll be shipped right to your house. And our good friend, uh, Dan Berman, he'll be hooking you up as well. So other than that, that's all we have for you today. Thank you to our buddy K9 for joining us. With that being said, Brian Nichols signing off here on the Brian Nichols Show. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.